In this video, we're going to look at document headings and the properties that control them. I'm going to use a simple recording for this I created earlier. Um, first thing to note is that the step names in here and also the screen titles are basically both taken from the name of the screen in the application. So when I generate a document, these things are used as the headings. I'm going to generate that document now and show you what that looks like. Um, for this, I'm going to use a copy of the training, the standard training document that I've put a bit of configuration into that I'll explain in a second. So let's generate this and see what it looks like with a fairly raw recording. The first thing to notice here is that the only bit of customization I've put into this over the standard document is that I've inserted a type table of contents specifically because it highlights the problem that I've got here. So you'll notice I've got three headings here, all called SAP Easy Access, because that's what's taken from the screen title. I've actually gone away and changed some of the ones later down, but I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now, this I don't like. I like each title to be unique. Um, but the further problem that I've got with this is that these first three steps are basically all on the same screen, just selecting something from a menu. If I go and look at that, I've basically got selecting the menu and then a sub-menu item, and then a sub-sub-menu item on there. And it's not really separate steps, so I don't really want to have separate headings for them. And that's where all of the problems come in with this. The other thing I'll note, I'll note here is that the main heading of this um, simulation, changing user options, is actually set to a heading 2 level. Um, the reason it does that is because that's to allow for if you're using a compound document or a master document where that document will be the level one heading and then each simulation within it because you can have multiple ones within a single document then that will be the level two. So I don't really like that either so I'm going to change that at the same time. So um, first thing that I usually do is rename these to something useful. So this title here I'm going to call it say start the function. Um, but then because I want these to be unique, um, these ones I can't really make unique because I don't want to have select the first level menu, select the second level menu. So what I usually end up doing is putting the same thing in there with continued on the end of it. And then I will put that on all of those steps that are really the same step. Now, the other thing to notice here is that for each of these steps, there's a couple of properties in here, show in progress display and jump target. Um, now, what they're used for is the first one, in fact, both of them are both used in the demo mode. So I'm going to open that and show you where they are used. So here in the progress bar at the top, this is where these are used. So you see here it says start the function, that's the text that I put in. This is the first step. And each of these, as I go through these, um, you can see that I've got the, the name that I typed in highlighted on each of these dots. Now, the dots are significant. Whether there's a dot there or not is whether the user can basically jump right to that one. So if I click on that, it will jump to that step. Click on this, it will jump to that step. Now, that is controlled. If I flip back, that is controlled by this parameter here, jump target. This actually does two things. One is it controls whether there is an actual dot on that line that the user can select from, but also it's used for any of the um, jump targets in here, whether I can select that particular step as a jump target. So it seems to use two options, but for our purposes here, the only thing we really care about is whether it appears back here in this bar along here. So what I tend to do is on the ones that are basically continuations, I will deselect show in progress display because I don't really want it to have a dot on here because it makes no sense for a user to start or to jump to halfway through this because we've already gone one menu level down. So I don't like to have that title in there, but I do like to have the jump target in there because although it will take away that dot so that the user can't jump to it, if they click next step, I still want them to be able to see it. So let's do that on these continued ones. I've taken the shelf progress display there and I've taken it off here. And now I'm going to close this down and I'm going to reopen it and show you what difference that makes. So now that we took that off of these ones here, there are no dots. There's still space in there because it wants to show you roughly how long the whole thing's going to take. But I, there's nothing that I can select on there. However, if I do click the next button, it will go to that next point and show me the actual next step, which makes more sense. 
So the fact that clicking next will put you there is controlled by the jump target and whether there's a title for it and whether they can select it via a dot is controlled by the show in progress display. Okay, so far so good. But let me close this down. Let me go back to the document now. So now you can see that I've got the headings that I want in there. It's still not perfect though. I've still got these ones that are continued and they shouldn't really be headings because it's part of the same step. The problem is that the only way I can remove the heading is to hide that screen. If I hide this screen by uh, deselecting showing documentation, then that whole screen won't appear as well as a heading not appearing. And I can't say don't show me the heading but still show me the screen. Luckily, there's something that we can do in the document formatting. So I'm going to go to where my document is defined, which is this one here. This is under resources, documentation settings. This is a custom one that I've created. Here you can see the only bit of customization I've done so far, which was to add that table of contents in there. If you don't know about the documentation settings, there's a post on the blog about that. What I want to look at down here is I'm going to go to the project content section and look at a couple of things. Firstly, it's this headings from. At the moment, this says step titles, and that means it's going to take those headings from the title of the steps. I've got a couple of other options in here. I've got screens and I've got none. Selecting none will mean that you get no headings in there at all and you have to put all of your headings in manually, which I'll explain in a minute. The other one is a bit more useful, the screens. I'm going to select that, which means it's going to use the screen name as the title. As we've just seen, they're basically both the same, but there is a key difference that I'll get to. While we're here, the other thing that I'll look at is the heading level. Um, and it's got brackets, single documents. So if you're only using single documents, come into here and I'm going to change this to one which means that the level one heading should be the project title itself. So now I'm going to go back into here and we'll see what difference that makes. First of all, I need to change the screen titles to be the same as the step titles or the step names. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that into here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my continuation steps. Strictly speaking, I don't need to do this because I'm going to hide these anyway but I like to be consistent about things and it's easier when you're scanning through here to see what's going on. Now, looking, if I select the screen in here, under documentation, you can see I've got a few things in here. I've still got that showing documentation flag, which will do exactly the same thing. And showing process flow, process flows used in some documents, we don't use it here, so it doesn't really matter. But the key thing here is use title as heading. Now, for these continuation steps, where it's really you know, an action that's still part of the same step, and I just want one step called start the function, what I can do here is for this screen, I can deselect use title as heading. I'm still gonna get the screen in there. And on the next one as well, I will still, I will do the same thing, deselect that. And now we'll look at what difference that makes in our document. So again, I'm gonna generate exactly the same type of document. And now you can see that I basically, if we're looking at these headings, I now have a one start the function. This is uh, my step hidden here. This is taken from the screen, but I've now got a screen, a step action table, screen, step action table, um, screen, step action table, all basically under the same heading, okay? Because I've deselected use the screen title as a heading right here for those other steps. And that's it, it's that simple. Now, one word of warning here, if you do deselect showing documentation, you will not get the heading. Even if I deselect showing documentation for the screenshot and still select use title at heading, I won't. I won't get the heading in there because it's not got the screenshot in there. But it is a bit more flexible than using the step heading. Anyway, that's all I wanted to explain. Again, just to summarize, the key fields to bear in mind here are actually in the documentation definition and those magic fields to worry about are headings from, which I've set to screen, and heading level, which I've set to one for the single documents. And that's it. I hope you found that useful. Go play with it. Thank you. If you found that helpful, you can stay connected by following our YouTube channel at bit.ly slash enetube for Enable Now Expert Tube. You can follow us on Twitter at EnableNowExpert or visit the blog at EnableNowExpert.com.